Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today we're going to talk about jerkbait tips. And I got for you three things that aren't talked about often with respect to jerkbaits, but I actually feel like are very, very crucial in terms of generating the fish into biting and at the same time putting your bait in a position where you're actually going to get the bite from a fish. Uh, jerk baits, as we have known for years upon years, are an amazing bait in terms of triggering uh, inactive fish into biting. It really does a great job at generate, generating some reaction strikes from the fish. Uh, and a lot of people just want to go out and throw it around, but there's a lot of different things that you need to pay attention to. And we've really found out how versatile these baits are with respect to forward-facing sonar. You know, we now are able to see how every rod movement we make uh, reacts with the fish in terms of what they're going to do. You know, sometimes if you snap the bait too hard, the fish lo lose interest. Sometimes if you don't snap hard enough, the fish lose interest. Sometimes the fish track the bait on the bottom of the water before they actually come up and hit. You know, I think we always think that the fish just make a beeline right for the bait and they do that a lot of times if they're really aggressive what we see is the fish just come flying for it from wherever they are but one thing that i find uh, very interesting is how often the fish want to track the bait so they'll they'll get under it and they'll follow along say six or eight feet under the bait before actually deciding to come up and uh, take a closer look at the bait or just swimming away uh, but there's a lot of different things that you can do and one of the things that I just saw at the St. Lawrence River fishing a jerkbait was how often those fish actually are tracking the bait. And one of the things that I could do to actually get them to uh, show a little bit more interest in the bait wasn't necessarily any sort of rod snapping or any sort of specific retrieve. It was really going with a little bit heavier hooks to get my bait to sink slower or to, and actually get it down right into their eye level. Uh, it was almost like if the bait came down to where they were at, they would show more interest. But if it stayed six feet above them, they would just track it. So having the ability to stop the bait and let it slowly fall was really important. And you know, the Berkeley Stunna is already a very, very slow sinking jerk bait. So that is in your favor, but I actually upsized my hooks slightly to these Gamakatsu Aaron Martin um, heavy duty finesse treble hooks and that added just a hair a hair bit more weight over the stock fusion 19 hooks that this bait would slowly sink and remember the st lawrence river has a lot of current so from that standpoint being able to get my bait to sink and to do it horizontally was really important but as soon as this bait would get down i would say in that three foot window above the fish they would change their attitude and and show much more interest towards my bait but if i couldn't get my bait down to them I wouldn't get any interest at all. So it's really important to note, uh, you know, there are things you can do to your jerk bait to get it down into the fish's wheelhouse versus having to try to get the fish to come up to your bait. So that was one thing. Now, another really important part to that was making extremely long casts. And I know a lot of people want to say, well, I can throw a jerk bait a long distance. And today's jerk baits are made really well to be able to uh, cast because they've got a, a weight transfer system. But one thing that's really important with that is you should not just try to rifle the bait out as fast as you can. Because a lot of times when you do that, you actually don't allow the weight transfer system to function fully. You're much better off if you, you pull back to cast and let the weight transfer settle into the back and then fire it forward. If you do that, you're gonna have much more uh, consistent casting distance. And that longer casting distance allows you to get your bait deeper. It allows you to keep your bait in the fish's wheelhouse longer. Along with that, what I'll also do is I like to use a light action spinning rod. And because of that, I can really load my rod up. So when I bring it back, not only am I allowing that weight transfer system to fall back, now I'm loading the rod up and I can use it as a slingshot to really help fire that bait out there. So that makes a huge difference. So that's a second tip. So the third tip for you comes down to not overworking your bait. Now we always wanna really jerk the rod hard to get the bait to slash all over the place. 
But I have found more and more how that can actually be detrimental to the fish. And sometimes what the fish actually wants is something that is just levitating in that fish's face. Uh, one of the keys for me this past week was actually when a, when a fish would come up to the bait, a slow swimming fish, one that was not overly aggressive, I would actually just let my bait sit there and I would just shake the rod tip. And what that was doing is that's just getting the bait to barely move in place, almost like vibrate in place. And those fish were coming up and eating it. If I went to slash that bait hard, they would just turn and swim away. It was almost like they hadn't seen a, a bait do that. I don't know if it had a little bit more of that dying bait fish uh, look to it, you know, where you have a bait fish that's just slowly undulating in the water. And that's what this could have been doing is just slowly kind of just barely vibrating. But the, the point here is you got to really figure out the cadence. Uh, cadence is the most critical part to your jerk baits. You know, if you just get into your, your rhythm of jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, if it's working that day, you're good to go. But if it's one of the days where they don't want to eat that and they want maybe a long 30 second pause or they want a hard up, uh, you know, an, a, a hard up kick with the rod, uh, you got to figure that out. So you got to play around with the, the cadence to get your jerk baits uh, to generate those strikes. Because a lot of times the fish want something very specific. And it's interesting to me how that can change from day to day. And it can change quite a bit from species as well. You know, if you're fishing a place that has both largemouth and smallmouth, a lot of times the smallmouth like a harder jerk and the, the largemouth I find don't want it to be slashed nearly as hard. They want to have it more in their face, as you could say. But it's really up to you. And with today's forward-facing sonar, whether you love it or hate it, it can tell you a lot, especially about a jerk bait. And it's really brought this back is as, you know, into the limelight where now it's a year round bait versus just a cold water bait. Uh, but jerk baits are great. I, uh, I'm missing those St. Lawrence river smallmouths at this point, that was a really fun event to fish. Uh, and hopefully you can take some of these jerk bait tips and apply it to your own fishing to give you, uh, the chance of catching a few extra bass the next time you head out on the water. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow.